Motion design conferences are ramping up for 2025. An artist shoots their shot and gets Buck's attention, and you could win one million dollars. One million dollars. It's Motion Mondays. Let's ride. But first, some MoGraph trivia. Blender has been gaining steam in our industry for at least the last five to six years, but how old is Blender? It feels relatively new, but is it? Stick around till the end to find out. Attention hermits, it's time to crawl out of your dark rooms and mingle with fellow meat robots. Two epic conferences are on the horizon for 2025, promising to fill your creative tank and expand your network. First up, the Dash Bash is back from June 11th through 13th, offering a two-day festival with an optional third day of workshops. Expect inspiring presentations and an all-star lineup, including Michelle Higa Fox, Reese Parker, and Lindsay and Alan Lassiter. Plus, keep an eye out for Kirsten Knoll from Scholar, Lo Harris with her jaw-dropping website, and Arahana Beharano from The Little Labs. The multidisciplinary speaker roster promises insights across the creative spectrum with a focus on emerging trends. Tickets are on sale now at dashbash.net. Not to be outdone, F5 by Motionographer is hitting New York City from May 15th through 17th next year. While the program's still under wraps, past speakers like Parker Posey, Mark Romanek, and Patrick Clare hint at the caliber you can expect. F5 tends to attract high-profile creatives and industry rainmakers, so it's a prime opportunity for networking. Sign up for Motionographer's email list for early bird tickets available in a few weeks. Both conferences promise to kick your creative juices into overdrive and give you a solid excuse to visit some very cool places. Trust me, there's nothing quite like being in a room full of people who geek out over the same nerdy motion design stuff as you. So, links in the description, snag those tickets before they're gone. Prepare your eyeballs, people. Jawset, the wizards behind the amazing Cinema 4D plugin Turbulence FD, have conjured up PostShot, a one-stop shop for creating radiance fields and Gaussian splats. This currently PC-only beta lets you shoot, train, animate, and render photorealistic 3D scenes with minimal effort. Drop in your images or video, watch it train in real time, then manipulate your new 3D wonderland. Even cooler, you can render directly in After Effects with PostShot's included plugin. YouTube channel Black Mixture took PostShot for a spin, creating a mind-blowing 3D selfie complete with beard stubble you can almost feel. The best part, all the lighting and surface properties are baked right in, giving you photorealism essentially for free. While the tooling around nerfs and Gaussian splats are still a bit clunky, PostShot looks like it might change that. Have you dabbled in Gaussian splats yet? Drop a comment and let us know your thoughts. This is the final countdown. Our fall 2024 session kicks off next Monday, October 7th, and you've got one week left to jump on board. Whether you're itching to master After Effects, conquer Cinema 4D, or dive into the depths of design and animation, we've got you covered. But this isn't your average tutorial fest. You get personalized, unlimited feedback on your coursework, shiny verified credentials for your LinkedIn profile if you complete the course, monthly live streams, and 24-7 access to a community of fellow motion designers. Plus, we've lined up some seriously cool guest speakers to blow your mind this fall. Head to our site and lock in your spot before next Monday. Trust me, your future self will be dabbing or maybe doing the gritty when you're crushing it with your new skills. We can't wait to see you in class. We've got a full slate of amazing work and artists this week. First stop, Matt Voices Portfolio, a typographic wonderland that'll make you question your font game. Matt specializes in 2D type animation and his work is a clinic in clever animation, gorgeous color palettes, and astounding variety. If you've got a type heavy project, Matt's the guy you want to call. Hat tip to school motion student Lars Carton for the heads up. Next, say hello to Odd Beast, formerly Polymath, a full stack studio churning out award-winning work across every medium imaginable. Their rebrand is a smart move, drawing attention back to the studio and signaling a new direction in their creative journey. From live action to editorial, 3D to 2D, Odd Beast's portfolio is a testament to their versatility and high-end capabilities. Microsoft is getting fluent with their new Fluent Illustration System. Check out the write-up for some amazing brand design. The article, penned by Jay Tan and Alexis Copeland, a former Ringling student of mine, offers invaluable insights into building a design system for a major brand. The accompanying video showcases a trend of abstract, beautifully lit 3D objects, but with fresh color palettes and textures. Look out for clever 2D-looking layouts in 3D space, smart camera angles and edits that reward repeat viewing. Don't miss Manon Loire's nostalgic loops that somehow managed to be both restrained and vibrant. Teach us your ways, Manon. This French motion designer and illustrator specializes in short animated loops and illustrated content for social and digital media. There's a throwback quality to her work that's utterly charming, coupled with a color sense that's simultaneously muted and punchy. I don't know how she does it. I'm a fan, and shout out to our student Anna Salamagna for the tip. 
Finally, Nerdo Studios' Peppa Pig piece for Nick Jr. is a 3D marvel that defies the laws of perspective. How they turn those wonky 2D designs into believable 3D characters is beyond me. The challenge of maintaining 2D character integrity while adapting to 3D space is no small feat, especially with designs that play fast and loose with perspective. Nerdo's mastery of lighting, texturing, rendering, and animation shines through, proving why they are at the top of their game. There's so much incredible work out there from established studios to up and coming artists pushing boundaries. It's a reminder of just how vast the talent pool is in our industry and the constant evolution of styles and techniques. Have you spotted some killer work that we missed? Tag us at School of Motion on social media or leave a comment below. Calling all seasoned freelancers and studio owners, Motion Hatch is opening up 10 spots for their balanced business bootcamp this October. If you've been in the game for at least two years and are raking in over 50,000 pounds annually, it's about 67,000 a year for us Yanks, this 12 month program might be your ticket to the big leagues. It's like a business coach and a motion design mastermind group all in one, focusing on marketing and operations to squeeze more juice out of your time and bank account. The reviews are glowing, so if you're ready to level up the business side of your creative empire, check out the link in the description, and who knows, maybe you'll finally figure out how to charge what you're worth. Talk about shooting your shot. Adrian De La Salle wanted Buck's attention, so he went all out with a custom animation calling out the studio and riffing on their iconic styles. This LinkedIn masterpiece tagged Buck folks and industry heavyweights causing a serious stir. The kicker? Buck actually responded, along with their creative directors. It's a reminder that our industry isn't as closed off as you might think. Even the big dogs will notice if you put in the effort. This move echoes B. Grandinetti's legendary giant ant pitch, complete with a custom song. So next time work slow, why not create something tailored for your dream client? Put yourself out there and you might just land that gig. Adrian, we are rooting for you and please keep us posted on how it goes. Design contests, how do you feel about them? Well, these two might change your tune. First up, Artlist is asking, what would you create with $100,000? Pitch your dream project in a 90 second video and you could score a six figure budget to bring it to life. In the world of animation and motion design, that's enough to make something seriously epic. The rules are simple, post your concept video on social media, tag Artlist with their specified hashtag and fill out the application. You got about a month to submit, so start brainstorming those dream projects. But wait, there's more. Doritos is resurrecting their legendary Crash the Super Bowl contest with a cool million bucks on the line. They're challenging fans to out-add the ad execs with the winning commercial airing during the big game. This contest, which first launched in 2006, has a history of launching careers and creating viral sensations. The winner not only pockets the $1 million grand prize, but also scores a trip to the Super Bowl. Motion designers, this is your chance to shine. Our skills give us an edge in creating high-end visuals that can compete with big budget productions. Even if you don't win, these contests can yield valuable portfolio pieces and help you catch potential clients' eyes. Study past winners on the Dorito site for insights into successful brand-aligned storytelling. You got about six weeks, so start brainstorming those million-dollar ideas, grab a bag of chips for inspiration, and get cracking. And who knows, you might just be the next motion design millionaire. It's new tool time. First up, Mobar 2 is bringing custom panels to After Effects with over 130 pre-built tools to streamline your workflow. The UI is really slick. The functionality is very deep and you can even start with a free version. From text presets to keyframe wizardry, Mobar has got you back. Meanwhile, Revision FX has unleashed Color Genius, an AI-powered color correction plugin for Premiere and After Effects and many other tools. It's not about cinematic grades. Think of it as your one-click solution for a balanced, natural-looking starting point for colorists. Perfect for editors drowning in long-form content who need a quick color boost. Both tools offer flexible pricing, including one-time payment options. As AI creeps into every corner of our industry, it's cool to see how it's being harnessed for practical time-saving tasks like this. Check out the links in the description and let us know if these tools pique your interest at all. Roll out the red carpet for our School Motion student of the week, Meredith Nelson. Taking on Design Bootcamp's 12 kilometers title sequence assignment, Meredith nailed the horror film's tone with a perfect blend of texture, color, and grungy typography. But here's what really caught my eye, the masterful use of negative space. Those mostly empty frames brilliantly echo the film's concept of scientists discovering something shocking deep underground. It's a subtle but smart application of design principles that elevates the whole piece. Meredith, you've got a knack for translating concepts into visuals, and we can't wait to see what nightmares you cook up next. So keep crushing it in Design Bootcamp. Blender keeps blowing our minds, and Daniel Martinez Lara's latest experiment is no exception. Using Blender's geometry nodes and grease pencil feature, Daniel's created a setup that turns 2D drawings into instant 3D clay textured geometry. It's like traditional animation and 3D had a beautiful tactile baby. 
This workflow preserves all the nuance and imperfections of hand-drawn animation while giving you the power of 3D rendering. It's exactly this kind of innovative feature that's making Blender a serious contender in the 3D world. As we gear up for our first ever Blender class at School Motion, now in production, examples like this get us even more excited about the software's potential. Give Daniel a follow on Instagram for more mind-bending Blender experiments. There's always something new to learn. Grab your low-rise jeans and frosted tips. Oh, I guess I can't do the frosted tips. Two Advanced Studios is taking us back to 2001. They've recreated their legendary Flash portfolio site using Rive, and it's a pixel-perfect nostalgia bomb. Remember when websites had loading screens and every button click was an event? While we might not need to return to those days entirely, this revival is a brilliant move. It taps into that sweet Y2K aesthetic while showcasing the power of modern interactive animation. Artists like Gmunk cite to advance as a major influence in their early careers. And this relaunch feels like a sign of things to come in the world of interactive motion design. Crank up the volume and head to twoadvance.com for a blast from the past that hints at the future. And stay tuned, we'll be chatting with the two advanced founders on the podcast very soon. And now let's talk about that trivia question. How old is Blender? Brace yourselves. This 3D powerhouse just turned 30. Created by Dutch art director and self-taught developer Ton Rosendahl, Blender's first lines of code were written way back in January of 1994. Blender 1.0 hit the scene in January 1995, and in 2002, Rosendahl founded the nonprofit Blender Foundation to make the software open source. It's a testament to the power of community-driven development. As Blender gains more traction in our industry, it's fascinating to look back at its humble beginnings. Who knew that the decision to go open source would lead to one of the most powerful 3D tools on the planet? It's counterintuitive to me anyway. It just goes to show that you never know which choices will shape the future of our industry. And that's it for this episode. Don't forget, you've only got one week left to register for our fall session and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of our weekly news updates, podcasts, tutorials, or anything else that we put on this channel. Thank you so much for watching. Links to everything we talk about will be in the description and we'll see you next week.